we praise him and we glorify him. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers, on our father Adam and our father Abraham, and on Moses, and on Jesus, and on his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We greet you from the studio of the Islamic Broadcasting Network here in my native island of Trinidad and offer greetings of assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Wherever you are, and you are listening to this broadcast, wherever you are in the world, whether you are in, in uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil, my students there, it's probably about uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Or if you are in New York, it's still 8 o'clock. Uh, if you are in London, it's probably lunchtime now, 12 o'clock. In France, it's about 1 o'clock. In Iran, my students there, it's probably about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, in Pakistan, about 5 o'clock. <laughs> in Malaysia, my students there are listening. It's going to be 8 o'clock at night now. As we address you here from Trinidad uh, on the subject of the signs of the times. Our talk will last for half an hour. And this is the first uh, of... Uh, a series which will be broadcast every uh, Sunday, Yawmul Ahad, the first day of the week, at uh, this time, 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, um, on the signs of the times. Uh, the last, the, the talk will last for, not half an hour, sorry, 40 minutes. And then we'll devote 20 minutes to questions and answers. Our form, 40 minutes will be devoted to trying to explain, trying to understand the reality of the world today and to anticipate what's coming tomorrow. There are some who are uncomfortable with any talk about anticipating what is coming tomorrow and yet these very people will look up in the sky in the morning and say it's going to rain today. Ah, yes. That's the kind of thinking we have today. They will look up in the sky and say it's going to rain today. They're anticipating rain coming. They're looking at the sky and reading the sky. And I'm asking them to look at the world and read the world and they wouldn't do it. So I have to control my my anger with these people. Uh, the signs of the times. Uh, every businessman looks at the market, every good businessman, and says, I think this is where the market is going to move. There's going to be a demand for this particular product tomorrow. Let me go and buy this product. This is a sensible, intelligent businessman who seeks to read and understand the market and to anticipate what is going to be coming as an increase in demand or increase in supply. If the weatherman could do it, if the businessman can do it, why can't the scholar do the same thing? You can send your questions by email. You'll find my email address at the bottom of the screen. Uh, send your, your questions by email if you're in Constantine in Algeria, if you're in Algiers in Algeria and you want to send a question by email, it can come very quickly, very quickly. Let me turn off my phone. Let me turn off my phone. Let me turn off my phone. It can come very quickly. Um, no matter where you are, just send your email to me and uh, we'll be able to try to answer your questions. Uh, if you are in Trinidad, uh, you can call 
Uh, there will be a number to call IBN uh, Studio on the bottom of the screen, and you can call in with your with your questions or your comments. And I know there are very intelligent people out there who will ask intelligent questions, important questions, and offer intelligent comments. And I will benefit from your comments, I assure you. I'm going to be 75 years of age soon, in a few days from now. And even at that age, I can learn. And I can benefit even from the young people. The young people who are perceptive and who look around them and who can see what's coming and who can share their thoughts with our listening audience around the world. Um, one of the amazing things about the world today, um, one of the most dangerous things about the world today, one of the things which should disturb us the most and concerning which we should be devoting the most attention uh, is what is happening in the world of money. I think you know what happened in India. Uh, must have been maybe two months ago. The Indian Prime Minister addressed the nation on a Sunday morning. I may be wrong by a few hours. And he announced that the two largest currency notes in India, you know, paper money, I think it's the 1,000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note. Uh, from midnight would be demonetized. This is not something which affects Muslims alone. It affects Hindus. It affects Christians, and these are our brothers, and we want the Christian to listen to our program with this confidence in his heart that Imran Hussein is his brother. No, Imran Hussein is not attacking Christianity. That is rubbish. That is a load of rubbish. Imran Hussein is not attacking Christianity. Imran Hussein does not want to destroy Christianity. That is a load of rubbish, so let's throw it in the rubbish bin. You are my brother, and I want to share with you my views on money. The Hindu who is not hostile to Islam is my brother. I want to share with him my views on the world of money and to benefit from what he has to say on the subject. So from midnight, the 1,000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note are going to be demonetized. You can't use them anymore as money. You can't buy and sell with them, no. They have no value except to return them to a bank or to a particular office, which will then accept them provided that you can provide proof that you paid your taxes, that this is uh, halal money, this is good money, not bad money, and so on. And uh, some people are going to have difficulties and they will end up with paper money in their hands that they can only use as wallpaper. That's right. If you cannot provide the proof needed for your money to be accepted. It's no longer money. That's all. Did you pay your taxes on this money? So on. If the money is accepted, then it may be changed for smaller notes. I'm not too sure about that. Otherwise, it's credited to a bank account. So every, every individual who is using money must have a bank account. And once you have a bank account, the money will be credited to your account. The reason why the Indian government did that and created havoc in India, enormous difficulties for the Indian, innocent Indian people, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, it didn't matter, 
Whereas, according to the Prime Minister, uh, he said, we, we are after the people who are uh, in the black, black money. Black money? Is money black and white as well? Oh my gosh, I wish we had Malcolm X here to take that and throw it in the garbage. I mean, how can you use the term black money? What's wrong with black color? Huh? Well, the money that is illegal according to them. And uh, that's why you demonetize this. this. Is this the best way? Or is this the most stupid way possible for dealing with money which is illegally held? Hmm? I think it ranks as one of the most stupidest things you can do. My language is harsh. I hope the Indian Prime Minister doesn't, isn't offended by this harsh language. But you created immense problems for the people with this stupid nonsense. Then subsequently, the Indian Prime Minister spoke more honestly. And he admitted that the reason why we have done this is because we want everybody to enter into the electronic money system. Oh, I see. So this is what Wall Street did. And they use India as a guinea pig to test, to test what is to come tomorrow. So in the same way that you could look up at the sky and say there's rain coming, so too we in this program are telling you this is a sign of what India did. This is a sign of what is coming tomorrow. So if you are in Algeria and you're listening to me, this is a sign which is coming tomorrow. Something coming tomorrow. What is it that's coming tomorrow? Answer, that there'll be no more paper money in the world. Now, all the money of the world that is used in the money system of the world would be electronic money, would be digital money, and sometimes they call it virtual money. Mm -hmm. And they'll all be in the banking system. So governments are not going to rule the world tomorrow. No, banks are going to rule the world tomorrow. And you know who controls the banking system. I, I am not anti-Semitic. No. I'm not anti-Jews. No. You can't say that of me. I have respect for Judaism. But there are a bunch of Jews who control the banking system. There are other Jews who oppose oppression in the world. And those Jews are my brothers. So don't come with this nonsense that Imran Hussein is anti-Jewish. That is false. The Jew who oppresses, who opposes oppression in the world is my brother. And the greatest oppressor in the world today is the Jewish state of Israel. That's, of, that's certainly the most uh, truthful statement that can be made. So I'm not being oppressive. I'm not being uh, vindictive. I'm not being discriminatory. I'm not anti-Semitic at all when I declare what is absolute truth, that a bunch of Zionist Jews control the banking system in the world. That's right. And um, so tomorrow going to be electronic money, digital money, virtual money. And all the money that you have will be in the banking system, in your banking account. So you can't take money out of the bank anymore. No. The money, the money cannot be taken out of the bank. It's invisible money. It's intangible money. All you can do is to transfer money from one account to another. But you can't take it out. You can't take it out and put it underneath your pillow. Forget that. So there can be no such thing as an anonymous transaction, a private transaction. If you want to give a donation, for example, to a church, or to a mandir, or to a masjid, there'll be a record of it. And if there's someone who doesn't like your giving money to a church, then and he has control over the banking system. He freezes your account because he finds you're giving too much money to the church. Or you're giving too much money to the mandir. And of course, their favorite whipping boy is the masjid. 
because they're waging war on Islam for the longest while. About a hundred years or more, the United States has led the world in waging unjust war on Islam and Muslims and the Orthodox Christians led by Russia. For a hundred years or more, the United States of America, it just not, it's not started with Donald Trump. For a hundred years or more, the United States has been waging unjust war on Islam and on Muslims and on Orthodox Christians and have Russia as the whipping boy and Muslim countries as the whipping boys. Yeah. So if you want to make an anonymous transaction, you can't do it. You want to make a donation privately, you can't do it. Why? Because there's a record. It's a transfer of money from your account to another account. They control the banking system so they can keep transactions private if they want to. And other transactions, they know what, what you're doing and then they can take action against you. What can they do? They can freeze your account. Yes, can they do that? Argentina, must have been a year or two ago, I don't know how long ago it was, I can't remember now, I'm too old now. Argentina had problems and the, with the money system, uh, runaway inflation. And the government of Argentina froze all bank accounts for one month. Yes, your bank account was frozen. You could not use it. <coughs> That's what they can do. Number two, they can take out of your account money without your permission. That was done in, I think, two or three cases already. I remember, was it Cyprus? Yes. Uh, seized from people's bank accounts, seized money because the government had, didn't have money and they took it out of your money. They can do that. So when you have money in a bank account, don't believe it's safe. No. But they want it in the bank account. They want to ensure that your money is captured. It's enslaved. You can't take it out. No, it's impossible to take it out. And so tomorrow the world is going to be moving away from the present monetary system of paper money to the new monetary system of invisible and intangible electronic money, cashless money, intangible money, virtual money. And that is a financial Guantanamo about to occur. Let me take a drink of water because that's terrible news. What should we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? Yes, let me first say that uh, my advice would be to buy gold coins and silver coins. In Islam, we call it a dinar and a dirham. In China, there are machines all over China, all over China. And the Chinese can go to the machine and buy gold coins and silver coins. That's what China is doing. The Chinese have sense. So if China can do it, why can't you? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Oh, the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund the International Monetary Fund, which controls the money system of the world today. The Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund prohibit the use of gold as money. Oh, did you know that? Why have they done that? Every Christian should ask that question. If you love Jesus as you say you do, then you should ask that question. Why should a Christian people, I thought the United States was a Christian country, or maybe they say a Judeo-Christian country. 
why should the United States of America lead the world in creating the International Monetary Fund, which prohibits the use of gold as money? That's not a Christian thing. No! Christianity should never, never, never allow such a thing like that. And if you are a pastor and you're listening to me, I want you to stand up and talk. Gold is money. Yes, gold is money. And Jesus went into the temple. Yes, you know that. And in the temple, there were money changers, and you know that. And they were changing temple money for Roman money. You know that if you are Christian and you are listening to me. The Roman money were gold coins, but they had a graven image of an emperor on it. And graven images are prohibited, haram. And so you could not use the Roman money in the temple. Temple in Jerusalem. Every Christian knows that if you're listening to me. <laughs> so the temple used to mint its own money. And the temple would mint gold coins with no graven images. Every Christian knows that. How many times must I repeat it to you, my Christian brother and sister? But the money changes for ripping off the people while changing the, the uh, Roman money for the temple money. It should be based upon the weight of the gold it must be an equal exchange of weight. If this is 100 grams of Roman money, then this must be 100 grams of temple money, exact, equal to exchange it. And secondly, it must be equal in purity. If this is 99.9% .9 pure gold, and this is 91%, then there'll be a way by which you can, ex you can calculate the difference and you have to exchange it in a manner which compensates equal for equal. And they were not doing that. And they were ripping off the people. And when Jesus went into the temple, oh, we love Jesus, oh, we do. And we love to see what he did in the temple. He, he cursed them, that's right, he cursed them. Even the Lord God can curse. This is not foul language. Cursing here is not foul language. I wish there was another word we could use other than curse. Because when you hear the word curse, you think about obscene language. But this is curse in the religious sense of the word. This is not obscene language. When the Lord God curses someone or when a prophet curses someone, it's not obscene language. Okay? So he cursed them. And he turned over their tables and he ch chased them out of the temple. Do you remember that, my Christian brother? Are you listening to me? And he said, you've taken the house of God and converted it into a den of thieves. Do you remember that? Yes, this was money. And there were gold coins. That's money. That's right. That's money. Gold coins and silver coins, and every Christian should know that. The Hindus already know that. The Muslims already know that. It's time for us to remind the Christians that this is money. But a Christian country, the United States of America, a so-called Christian country, so-called Christian people, I don't know where their Christianity came from, maybe Hollywood or Disneyland. That's not Christianity. For the... Articles of agreement of the International Monetary Fund to prohibit the use of gold as money. That looks sinister to me. That looks like a mad and devilish scheme on their part. A devilish people, an evil people who want to take gold and silver coins out of the market so they can bring their bogus paper money. In subsequent uh, lectures, we will turn to the scriptures.
to explain what is money. At this time, we are not doing this, this is the introductory talk. At this time, we are simply pointing out that this is what Jesus did. Alayhi salam, Nabi Isa alayhi salam in Arabic. And in English, you say Jesus. This is what he did when he went into the temple. This was money, a gold coin and a silver coin. And so I want to say to you, whether you are in Aruka in Trinidad, or in Mayaro in Trinidad, or in Tobago, or you are in uh, Tlemcen in Algeria, or you are in Paris in France, or you are in Geneva, or you are in Tehran, or you are in Karachi, or in Kuala Lumpur, wherever you are, you are in Cape Town, it's time for you to start getting some gold coins and some silver coins and keep them. Or you can also buy gold bars, gold bars, which is not in the form of a coin, it's a, a gold bar, a, a silver bar, and keep them for security. So that on that day, when all the money is in the banking system, and all transactions are going to be recorded with a trail, an electronic trail to trace every transaction, and they can freeze your account any time they want, you will have your money outside. Oh yes, you'll only keep in your bank account whatever is needed for small transactions. That's all. So if they decide to freeze your account, all they'll collect is peanuts. And when you have to do, keep your wealth, keep it outside of the banking system, but keep it in gold and silver. And that will give you safety. When you keep your money outside of the banking system and you keep it at home, they're going to come after you at home now <laughs> to break into your home to steal your money. Mm -hmm. So that's another problem now, security. In the signs of the times that we are, you do not live alone. You do not live in an unprotected area. This is not yesterday, no. Tomorrow is going to be even more dangerous than today. Our prophet said, and I hope every Christian and every Jew and every Hindu is listening as well to the Muslim. Our prophet said about the age in which we live today. He said there will be widespread slaughter and killing. Harj, he said it. So the people asked him, what is Harj? And he said, killing and slaughter. And he went on to say that the killing and the slaughter will be so meaningless, so random, so senseless. That sometimes the one who kills would not know why he was killing. And the one who is killed would not know why he was killed. And so the world is being killed corrupted. The language of the Quran is facade. Corrupted. The world is becoming more and more dangerous. And our program, Signs of the Times, is meant to tell you. You're living in a dangerous world and it's becoming more and more dangerous. There will be time enough for us to go to the Quran and go to the Hadith and go to the scriptures to tell you more on the subject. Who are the actors who are corrupting the world and so on? At this time, there is sufficient evidence to already confirm what we are saying, that we live in very dangerous times. What do you do? We already said, Get some gold coins, get some silver coins. Even if you can't get the coins, get the gold bars. In many parts of the world, it's easy to buy it. As I said to you, in China, they have millions of machines. Money machines, you can go and buy gold coins and silver coins from the machine itself. That's what the Chinese are doing. The Chinese have sense. I don't know where the rest of us are. Where is our sense? The Chinese have sense in their head. And you tell me China, China is a communist country. And we, are, we are the ones in the free world. <laughs> Let me drink some water. 
we see that you have to live in areas which are secure in this age. You can't just choose where you want to live randomly. No. You have to take precautions in this age for security reasons. If you're keeping your gold and silver at home, you want to be sh sure that people can't come and break down your door and break through your window and come in and kill you and steal your money. No. Uh, if you're living alone, they can come and put a gun at your head. I, I have to tell you the story of a cousin of mine. Uh, he's not, uh, he's handicapped. And this cousin of mine, I just heard the story yesterday. Eh? He worked for many years in a supermarket. He had a bad leg. He had to be dragging his leg or walking. And uh, because he's also a little bit mentally handicapped, he has problems. Poor young fellow. He lived all his life until he retired. Never getting married, living alone. And then he got a hundred, he saved up a hundred thousand dollars and he had it in the bank. The, car, the, the supermarket gave him a, a, a gratuity when he retired. Someone working in the supermarket knew about it and that person informed somebody else and that person came to this cousin of mine who was living alone, I think with a gun probably, and frightened him, give me your money. He said, I don't have the money here. And I know it's in the account. They took him to the bank. They got him to take out the 100000 and give it to them. And they frightened the poor boy so much. If you whisper anything about this, we're going to come for you. And he's still terrified for, by now. Six months ago this happened. He never even reported it to the police. He's so scared. He is so scared. If you were in the same position, you might also be so scared. And all his money is gone. He doesn't have any more money now. Mm -hmm. This is a sign of the times in which we live. So you have to come together and live as communities with collective security in order to be able to survive. So today, all we have done, we've not as yet taken up the subject of money as to what is money in Islam and what is money in Christianity and Judaism and maybe Hinduism as well. Maybe some of our callers will be able to offer some insights into that as well. Uh, but what we have said is that this is what's coming. Rain is coming today. You look in the sky, what I'm telling you, electronic money is coming. Paper money is going. And when electronic money comes, all your money are going to, is going to be captured and imprisoned in the banking system. And then they will be held hostage. If you don't behave and bow down and submit to them, they seize your money. That's it. Your money is gone. So the whole world is going to have to listen to them and put your line on the, your feet on the toe and follow their instruction and dance to every tune that they play. And you call yourself a Hindu? Uh -huh. You call yourself a Christian? You call yourself a Jew? You call yourself a Muslim? You call yourself a Buddhist? No, you're not worshipping according to your religion. You're worshipping them. And you're there with your toe on their line. And you're dancing to every tune that they play. It's a satanic world out there. Satan taking control of the whole world. And it's time for us to respond. We have just a few more minutes to wrap up for today. Remember, uh, you can send your questions to me by email. Uh, the email address is at the bottom of the screen. And uh, I have my laptop here so I can read your emails. And um, you can also uh, send, uh, ask your questions or make your comments uh, by telephone. There is a telephone number at the bottom of the screen. And we'll be very happy uh, to listen to what you have to say. This program that we've had this, this uh, Sunday will be repeated next week. Same program. Why? Because there are so many people who probably don't know that we've started this program. We want you to inform your friends and inform your family. Send an email wherever they are. Give them the email. Give them the address of the ibntt dot dot com, I think, and um, so that they can um, tune in. They can log in wherever in the world they are, 
and listen to the lecture. We repeat this program next week, same thing. And then uh, uh, I have to travel. I can't say where I'm going to attend a conference. And I'll be away from Fort Trinidad for about three weeks. So during that time, we'll ha have some pre-recorded lectures, and, um, but no question and answers because I won't be here until I return uh, in the 9th of March. And then after that, we'll be able to again return to the question and answer uh, session. Our subject has been the signs of the times. And we are attempting in this program to offer advice and guidance, not just to Muslims, no. We, we want to offer advice and guidance to Christians and to Hindus and to even people who do not follow the religious way of life but who want to live a good life. People who want to be honest. People who want to have integrity in their lives and character in their lives. Even if they don't follow a particular religion. We cannot say that only a Muslim is a righteous man. What nonsense. What absolute nonsense. We can learn from a righteous Christian. A Hindu who is a very, uh, a very honest man in his business is something that's very important to us. So let's, uh, let's break for a moment, inshallah, and then we'll come back for the question and answers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah awwaluhu wa akhiru. I have a first question from South Africa. Um, I, I won't mention the name of the person who is uh, sending the question. I'll just mention your country. And if you could give me your city as well, um, I'd be very grateful, okay? So the first question has come from South Africa. And this is what he asks. What do we do with gold and silver if business do not accept it? Answer. The first reason why you are buying and accumulating gold and silver coins is to protect your money, protect your wealth. Because if you do not have your wealth outside of the banking system, your wealth or your money is going to be imprisoned in that banking system and therefore hostage if they want to freeze you your account, they can freeze it, there's nothing you can do about it. Don't come to me and say, Molana, Sheikh, look what they've done, what can I do? <laughs> I can't help you at that time. They can freeze your account, number one. They can take money out of your account without your permission. They can do they've done it already. They've frozen accounts already. They've taken money out of accounts already without the permission of the whole of the account. So if you want to protect yourself from that financial Armageddon, hmm, from that financial Guantanamo, you would, you're accumulating gold and silver and keeping them privately in order to protect your wealth. That's the first reason, okay? I, um, I traveled from Malaysia to come to Trinidad and I brought a hundred silver dirhams with me in my suitcase. I calculated that one dirham would be sufficient to provide food for a family for one day. One dirham. So if the banking system collapses, if paper money collapses, and if my bank account is frozen and I have no money, at least I have money, a hundred dirhams, to be able to eat for a hundred days. Yes. So you can do that. I have students in Cape Town. I don't know where you are in South Africa. But in Cape Town, my students, uh, they bought the silver, the raw silver, and they bought the machines, and they had them in a garage. And when I went to Cape Town on my last visit, they said, Maulana, come in. These are my students. 
and we're going to mint a silver dirham. And they had this strip of silver and a machine to cut uh, around, say correct weight, and then another machine to, to um, stamp uh, an image on it, not a human image, yeah? and another machine to polish it. And they, I made one silver dirham myself in Cape Town. Okay. The next thing that they did in Cape Town, my students, was that they, they created a market uh, once a month, I think. And anyone can come in the market and sell, and anyone can come in the market and buy, but buying and selling in the market was restricted to dinar and dirhams, silver coins and gold coins. So when you brought your South African rands to the market, they would change it for you to uh, silver dirhams. And when you're leaving, if you had any silver dirhams left and you wanted to reconvert it, they reconvert it to, to, to South African rands at the same price, no change. Hmm? So in the market, you'll use silver dirhams for buying us. So you hardly ever use a gold coin in the market. You'd use mostly silver coins. And uh, they do this once a month. And then my students in Durban, they heard about it, and they decided they want to start a market there in Durban as well. I don't know, maybe they have already started it. And the ones in Cape Town, I'm not sure, they wanted it to become a weekly market. So there you are. You can start a market. And in that market, people will buy and sell using gold and silver. This should not be a Muslim market, no. This should be a market run by Hindus, by, by Muslims, by Christians, by Jews, by Buddhists, everybody who follows the religious way of life, and even those who do not have a religion, but who do not want to be oppressed by this, um, uh, this um, uh, bogus monetary system. Um, what can the IMF do? The IMF has prohibited the use of gold as money, we say to the IMF, get lost. We are not going to bow to you. The head which bows to the one God is not going to bow to a satanic system. No, the head which bows to the one God, the head which bows to the one God, whether it be Hindu or Christian or Jew or Muslim, the one God, the head which bows to the one God is not going to bow to a bogus and satanic monetary system prohibiting the use of gold and silver as money. Now, the reason why you have prohibited the use of gold as money in the international monetary system is because you want to replace the monetary system given by the Lord God by another one which has come from Satan, from Dajjal, with first of all with paper, and now tomorrow with invisible <laughs> electronic and digital money. We want to defy you. That's right. We want to defy you. And we do that, as Malcolm would say, without regard for consequences. Hmm? That's what we're going to do. If government decides to act against us, then we make hijra. And we go somewhere else in the world where we have freedom. Yes, even if all of us have to go to Russia, leave the United States and go to Russia, we'll do that if the Orthodox Christian decides he's not going to submit to the IMF. Because all the Muslim countries are led by slaves of the IMF and slaves of Washington. That's all of them except a few. Except a few. So this is my answer to you from South Africa, uh, that we should... Uh, that we should... Uh, Establish markets uh, where we can use the gold, but with you with businesses which are prepared to accept the gold and silver as money. Now, can we take any? Are we have, do we have any calls from Trinidad? Okay, we have another question here. And it is from Arima on the line, okay. Good morning. Go ahead. Hello, good morning. 
Go ahead. Okay, good morning, Mulanga. Um, I want to find out something. You're talking about the gold and silver for monetary use. Yeah. And I want to know, as, as, as Trinidadians, what we could do um, by way of uh, um, securing ourselves locally, personally, as individuals. Um, what could we do in, 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 yes. in that situation? I'll just hang up and listen online. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Arima. That's a very, very important question. Thank you, Arima, for asking. Arima is a, is a town in Trinidad. Eh? Um, what I would suggest is that uh, we need to have, get some businessmen in Trinidad who are prepared to import uh, the silver more than gold. And, uh, and, and silver is, is available. Mexico is one of the world's greatest producers of silver. Bolivia is one of the world's greatest producers of silver. Mexico used to supply the whole world with silver coins. I think they were called uh, pieces of eight. And when these ships were traveling from Mexico, going back to Europe, then people like, uh, what was his name, Sir Walter Raleigh, these, these terrorists, <laughs> would attack the ships. <laughs> attack the ships and steal the money. And they were terrorists. But they're held <laughs> today in great honor and respect, these terrorists who would attack the ships and take over all the money. They're called pieces of eight, silver coins minted in Mexico because Mexico produced silver. All that we need in Trinidad is to get a businessman, a, a jeweler or somebody who would order, who would buy the silver and because you get it right there. Gold you can get from Venezuela. Venezuela produces gold. And then right here in Trinidad you mint the coins. Okay? And uh, the important thing in minting the coin is number one, the weight. And number two, the purity. These two. Once you have your honest weight that this coin is so many grams and this, this coin is this per, per, uh, percentage of purity. Mm -hmm. And then you put the coins on the market for people to buy them and you'll find easily, provided we do what, what I'm doing here today, to teach the subject. People will get to know every Christian who is a Christian in this country will want to keep gold and silver coin. Every Hin Hindus are more intelligent on the subject. The Hindus are probably already doing that. They know more about the subject than them, the others. Every Muslim would want to keep gold and silver coins, okay? Another, another call from Port of Spain. Hello? Hello, morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd just like to know where in Trinidad uh, we could get gold coins or silver coins to buy. Okay. Um, I do not know. I do not know where in Trinidad, but I'm going to find out for you, okay? I'll find out from you, and in a subsequent, uh, in a subsequent uh, program, I'll be able to, if there's anyone in Trinidad selling gold and silver coins, I don't know. And whether the government of Trinidad has provide, prov um, uh, imposed any restriction on the sale of gold and silver. It is, it is remarkably foolish, remarkably foolish of the government of Trin the present government of Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm trying to use polite language, really, to what they do, what they're now trying to do of imposing an, an age limit for girls to be married at the age of 18. Remarkably foolish. Uh, but we're not going to take up that subject at this time. Um, it would be remarkably foolish on them if they seek to impose any ban on people buying gold and silver coins in Trinidad. We'll defy them. We'll defy them. We will defy them. Let me put them on notice. We're going to defy you. Yeah? You're not God that you can impose any law you want upon us. No. So I don't know. We'll try to find out. And in a subsequent program, I'll let you know if there's anywhere in Trinidad where you can buy gold and silver coins. And if not, we have to try to do something to make it available. Okay? Thank you. We have a... Uh, 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 again, we have questions coming by the internet, but they wouldn't tell us from which part of the world <laughs> the question is coming. 
Uh, I come from a wealthy background. So when you talk about gold, uh, one second Netherlands, we'll, we'll come to you in a minute. I come from a wealthy background, so when you talk about gold, this is what I've been doing. I do not trust the bank. And the money is the bank. My mother is a Hindu. However, she understands this country and the system, and I feel that Allah has graced her with so much sense that she's preparing to protect her wealth. My question is, when the time comes to leave this country, what implications will there be? Even when I go to India, for example, and I get asked, where, where, why have you so much gold? Why are you keeping so much gold? It's also risky. Yes, I know. I know that there are risks involved in keeping your gold at your home or traveling with gold. I travel with a few gold coins, just a few, in my pocket. I don't put it in my suitcase, and I don't put it in my carry-on. No. I put it on my person. So when it's in your person and you're passing through the, the machine that, that, and the, 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 the sensors and so on, they will see this part, the gold. So once or twice they, they looked at the gold, but they never took it from me. Just a few gold coins I had. Um, but there's a problem, there's a chance, and you cannot avoid that danger, all right? So that does not mean you should not keep the gold and silver coin. Now let's take the call from Netherlands. Hello? Hello, yes, sir? Yes. Uh, do I speak with Sheikh Munar Hussain? I'm listening to you. What's the question? Assalamu alaikum, sir. I just had a question uh, about Gog and Magog. And uh, your view about Gog and Magog. Um, I just wanted to know is it possible that uh, in later days of your life, uh, you will uh, the, you will realize that uh, the, uh, the what you say about Gog and Magog uh, is not the uh, correct view. That the reality is this uh, something others. Or do you know 100% what you now say about Gog and Magog is that that's that true? Because if it is true, then we will follow you 100%. That's why we want to know. Okay, Netherlands, Netherlands, Netherlands. We will take up the subject of Gog and Magog in a subsequent talk because it's also part of the signs of the times. All right, if you're outside of Trinidad, I suggest please don't call on the phone. If you're outside of Trinidad, please send me an email. I'm getting emails here, but we're running out of time. Send me an email, you'll find the email address at the bottom of the screen. If you are in any part of the world other than Trinidad uh, or Tobago, no, not Tobago, IBN doesn't reach Tobago. If you're outside of Trinidad, please don't call on the phone, okay? Send me an email. I have my, my laptop here, and I'll get your email, and I'll answer you. About my personal safety and security, I said to you I'm going to be 75 years of age in just a few days from now. Uh, and uh, the, um, the, the... The fact, the fact is that I have been traveling and there is danger whenever I travel. I lecture and there is danger when I lecture because these people are very powerful. Yes, they're very powerful. But the fact is that Malcolm set the stage for us. You know Malcolm X. He set the stage for us. Malcolm declared that I am for truth no matter who tells it. <laughs> Those were his words. He says, I am for justice. No matter for whom it is for or against, I am for justice. And Malcolm would, would resist the oppressor by whatever means are necessary. This was Malcolm X. And he set the stage for us. Uh, I just got the news that IBN is in Tobago, so if you're in Tobago, you can call on the phone. If you're in Trinidad, you can call on the phone. But if you're in other parts of the world, please don't call on the phone. Just send me an email. You'll find my email address at the end, at the bottom of the screen. And uh, we now have to wrap up for today. Uh, this program will be repeated. Today's program is going to be repeated next Sunday. So you can call your friends and family. You can send emails to different parts of the world so that they can listen next week. 
So until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.